All right, ladies and gentlemen, just a quick video today. I want to talk about squat technique, and I want to look at Mr. Kennedy, Clarence Kennedy, the uh, legend of the weightlifting sphere in uh, on YouTube, and he's also one of my good friends. Hoping I can get out to Ireland and the UK. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the fall or something like that. Uh, maybe fall or winter, and then you know we'll do some collabs again. But I want to go over some of his techniques in the squat. So the first thing I want to talk about is this obsession with vertical torso in the back squats, particularly the high bar back squat. If we're looking at low bar back squats uh, for powerlifting, you know we're going to see the bar travel down the back more and more and more, and. You know, one thing I want want you guys to think about is like just because the bar is not in a low bar position, it's it's in a high bar position, doesn't mean you're not trying to use the hips. I feel like we always the pendulum swings too far in each direction. Oh, we're squatting low bar, that means send your ass back to the back of the room. Oh, we're squatting high bar, that means keep your chest completely vertical or else you're not doing it correctly. And I think that Clarence does this really well of being able to blend the use of the hips and the knees. And there is an aspect to the back squat where you have to have very strong hips and a very strong back. There's a certain point at which you're almost pulling the bar up and Clarence does that very well. So let's look at his lift. This is uh, this, this one's crazy. Um, I remember I visited Clarence, or actually maybe he came to visit me, and um, he showed me this video before he posted it, and I just remember being like, this is one of the most raw, insane videos I've seen on the internet. Uh, all right, so he does 265 for 10 reps, and this is actually a really good video to watch to see someone's technique, because it's heavy, right? Even for him, this is heavy, even though his best is like 310 or maybe even 320, it's still heavy, so it's gonna push him into all the positions, and it's not so light that it's not realistic for working weight, for, for strength training. So here, I already like his back position here. So many people go on top of the traps and they kind of like pinch their uh, cervical spine here. I like his back position. It's kind of that hybrid. It's it's not, you know, so low that he's, his hands are down here. Uh, and it's also not so high that he's just like a weird, like, neck squatting position. So I already like the position he gets himself into here. But the main thing I want to talk about is the hips. Okay? We're going to pause it at the bottom position here. And this is why I consistently say this. Okay? Get your hip crease noticeably below the knee crease. And if you do this, your knees will end up lining up right on top of your toes, maybe slightly behind them. It depends on your length of your femurs, whatever. But I want you guys out there to focus on noticeably getting your hip crease below the knee crease. And if you can't do that with a barbell on your back, then you have to work on doing that without a barbell on your back. This is why I prescribe the five minute squat. Uh, where you basically teach yourself to find that spot. In weightlifting, and you know, just in general, if, if we're going to look at Clarence's squat here and say, wow, that's a great squat, this should be where you begin learning how to squat. Not how you come from a standing posture and getting to this posture. No, get to this posture, get to this position, hip crease below the knee crease, Get there first and learn how to be in that position. I did a, a video with all of the drills developing this. Go ahead and click and watch that. There's all these drills talking about this aspect. But this is something that I think people miss out on entirely. What they see when they look at Clarence Kennedy is, wow, he's got a super vertical chest. So what they end up doing is, and hopefully you can see me here as I bash into my green screen. They end up coming, they're in this standing vertical position right here. And what they say is, oh, well, I can't let my chest come down. I can't go like this. So I'm going to try and squat vertically. And they get to this position right here. 
and then they kind of like flop in and out. And then what you end up seeing is this big arch right here, this huge arch, and it ends up just being a complete shit show. Okay, if we are to focus on the on two very important things, the proximity of the calf to the hamstring and the proximity of the quad to the torso, you cannot miss out on either of those things. This is why the five minute squat is so important is because you learn how to relax almost while having a tense torso. Okay. Get to this position and build up your ability in that position, okay? This is like, I'm not training squats very often anymore. I'm, I'm probably, at this point, when I hit this 200 kilo back squat, which was a lot for me in since, you know, I started doing jujitsu and stuff like that. But the reason why I was, my, my squat was building back up again was because of these things. I would just focus on, okay, hip crease below the knee. Hip crease below the knee, try not to have this awkward descent, okay? And you can see like, there's a little bit of a grind here, but my my position of the barbell on my back might be slightly lower than Clarence's, but again, we're different morphologies, but even still, I can take some of the stuff that I watch of him and apply it to myself. But as you can see here, guys, like as I go down, I'm not overly concerned about staying in that standing posture as I bend my knees, okay? I'm trying to find that hip crease pocket right here. The hip crease being noticeably below the knee crease. This is not just for, you know, for the sake of, oh, we need to to check the, the rep. The rep doesn't count unless you do these things. No, this is to properly develop the hips as well as you know the muscles that surround the knee. So Clarence, uh, in an interview with All Things Gym, it's up on their blog, and he, he talks about how he had like really, really bad knee tendinopathy. And I think, I don't know if he ruptured a tendon or something like that. And you can see when he started to pause all of his reps, there's a saga of Clarence pausing every single one of his reps. But essentially, you could see he's he, he was almost babying the knees at the time at times. Um, but in doing so, he developed his hips, and and he developed them to be the best in the game. And as you guys can see, as he ascends here, there is a torso lean, and that's okay. So many people worry about the torso lean, but they fail to understand that, you know, this position is what they need to work towards. And the torso lean, it's just not that much of a factor. Okay. And you can see, you know, as he stands, his knees aren't just like collapsing. They're not shooting forward. It's not an imbalanced squat. He has a lot of control here. So... Look, practicality. You guys, hopefully you know this by now, but if you go to my channel, like the front page of my channel, there is a section called technique videos. And there are over 45, there's 46 technique videos up here, okay? And I talk about the squat in a lot of them. Let's find, yes, here we go. This video will give you things you can practice and 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 will absolutely, if you change the the style in which you squat if you are if you are some people out there who back squat with that weird arch and you're always fighting against the barbell this video right here can absolutely help you with that okay and guys this is coming from somebody who at 23 years old like I could not squat for the life of me I think you know my best when I was in college was like 125 kilos, so 275, and I don't even know what it looked like. It probably looked like dog shit, okay? And I developed that all the way up to a 230 kilo squat, 507 pounds, like with a hip crease noticeably below the knee crease, and honestly, it moved pretty fast, okay? Now, relative to a lot of people out there, a lot of power lifters, a lot of strong weight lifters, that's not that heavy, but for me, that's massive to ever 
back squat over 500 pounds was something that I could not see happening. I promise you guys, if you focus on these things, look at Clarence's squats through the lens of, oh wow, he's using his hips. Yes, he has a vertical torso, but it's not, that, that's not what's on his mind as he's descending. If you guys can do these things, I, I can almost guarantee you that you will have A, a better time squatting. It'll be much more fun for you. And B, you'll be a lot stronger and you're going to get a lot bigger, stronger legs. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.